<laughs> this is how I have the, I, I, I think I have it lined up like this. OK. Um, this is a talk about the WP43S, which does not yet exist. Um, and right now, it's, it's uh, virtually uh, completely in the mind of Walter Bonin, uh, who, whose uh, stuff we've discussed in the past. I don't think this is going to take too long. But I just wanted people to know where, where things stand right now, at least as, as I understand it. So back at HHC 2010, um, I gave a presentation called an HP30B repurposing product project uh, for, for Walter Bonnet and, and Paul Dale, uh, where uh, they talked about proposing a machine called the WP34S. And, uh, they didn't know how to get it on the hardware at the time, if I recall. So I thought, let's talk about it. They had a they had an emulator for for the PC, uh, but ultimately um, Marcus von Cube joined the team and they got it working. And as a result, uh, we had a WP34S, and after that, a, a WP31S. There's also a 30S. <coughs> there was a 30S. Did, um, yes. I have one flash. Maybe the only one. Okay. There's right. a 30S. And in fact, even after Walter declared the project complete, a few of those people. Uh, thank you. A few of those people uh, had even uh, further improvements and. Uh, a, a two-line display was uh, was proposed, and, and the latest firmware uh, shows a Y display as well as an X display. So um, what Walter had always hoped for was a machine that had a better display and soft keys, and you know, along these lines, uh, Eric Smith had been uh, working on possibly producing a calculator on his own, and Walter had designs on maybe getting a hold of uh, a prototype of Eric's. Um, so last year, uh, Eric talked about a machine which he nicknamed at the time the XC42. And uh, there is, I think, I think that's Roger looking at that machine, if I'm not mistaken. But that was his working uh, unit at the time. That was the picture I got over the shoulder. Of, of that unit. So Walter's been working on his uh, specification and uh, back in May I got this email from Walter that says since I don't know about any news of the reptiles I'd like to send you what's the current status on my side. Maybe it helps motivate some people to further progress. It's simply very silent else. Uh, that was back in May. Um, Translation. <laughs> but as Eric said, I, I think he thinks that Walter's got his email, so they could have communicated, but I, I'm not sure why they haven't. Uh, so in the mean, meanwhile, it, it gave me an idea uh, to, to talk about this. So what he had done at that time, he forwarded me the first version of his user manual for the 43S. Um, and I, I just wanted to give you an overview of some of the features as he sees it in, in version 0. Uh, it's extremely ambitious, uh, and he's, you know, they're going to need another whiz bang team to do the work. And I know when the 34S was being done, uh, Paul Dale was between jobs, so he was able to uh, devote lots and lots of time. And, and currently, he's fully employed, to my understanding. So I'm not sure Paulie is going to have the kind of time that he had before. So we'll have to see how it goes. Um, so. So this is the current layout of the 43S, and it looks like, uh, to use a term I guess I've heard before, m maybe it was coined by Bill Wicks, when he said that the 48 was kind of like a stretch pioneer. This, this is, I guess it's a, a slightly less stretch pioneer, and got one, one row of keys fewer than the 48, uh, but still one more than, more than the pioneers, and Walter decided to make it look like a pioneer not knowing, you know, ultimately what any hardware would, would look like. But uh, he was sticking to the, to the specifications that he knew that Eric was shooting for with respect to the resolution of a screen. And, and um, so this is, this is his first kind of overall picture of the thing. And it, I'm going to 
review some of the features, and there's just too, too, they're too numerous to, to rattle off. But um, this was, a, and of course, you have all this on your flash drive, so you'll be able to read it, you know, more clearly um, at your leisure. But uh, he rattles off a, a, a solver, a numeric integrator, a, a differentiation, a programmable sums and products, support for real and complex numbers, fractions, integers, and text strings matrix and vector operations, including a matrix editor, statistical operations, probability distributions, base conversions, the manipulations up to 64 bits, a stopwatch, real-time clock, uh, easy to use menu system, key, a keyboard layout and menus that can be customized by the user, uh, a, a, a very powerful catalog function, uh, keystroke programming like the 34S, um, and in this case, he's saying uh, programs written for the 41CX, the 42S, and the 34S should pretty much run unmodified on this beast. Um, uh, onboard uh, memory backup, uh, SD card slot, and, uh, infrared port for printing uh, as well. More basic features. Uh, this is kind of the, the nitty gritty. Uh, if you go to the right-hand side, well, he, he talks about a full set of scientific functions, probability distributions, uh, uh, fundamental physical constants, and 90 conversions. Um, again, four or eight stack levels like the 34S, 107 uh, general purpose registers, uh, also the addition of uh, named variables, as many as memory will hold, 112 global user flags, up to 10,000 program steps in RAM, 20,000 in flash, uh, 16 local flags and, and up to 888 local registers per program. Uh, and finally, multi-line high-resolution alphanumeric display um, allowed for menus and soft keys. So here is his picture of the layout of the keyboard and he divided it into six sections. Um, the top row uh, for uh, soft keys, uh, common math functions, uh, modes and data types, stack and register operations. A general navigation uh, and functions for programming. Uh, the machine has F and G shifts, uh, backing one shift off from the 34S, which had three. Uh, so, menus and soft keys, what he was hoping could be done would be that when a menu is up, and in this case, uh, this is the, uh, I guess this is the logs menu, um, you will get uh, definitions for the keys the, uh, in the primary mode, in the gold shift, and in the blue shifted position. So you'd see up to 18 definitions simultaneously in addition to the four level stack and a row of status enunciators. Uh, and uh, I think we're going to get into, maybe get into this a little more. If, <coughs> if a particular soft key takes you to a submenu, it's he shows it in the manual as inverted. This one happens to be just that that row there. And also, menus can have multiple rows. And he indicated, I think, some sort of a dashed line or a dotted line above this to, to indicate that there's more rows. And you use the up and the down arrows to navigate between menu, menu sections as well. Since, you, since you've got small characters there, uh, having a, uh, a mode where you could say, put it, uh, instead of having four lines, you have eight lines in this stack would be nice or there's cases absolutely to see more of it. yeah the machine will handle an eight level stack but I'm not really sure why he never suggested a, a smaller font for showing eight levels at once although you'll see later he does have it automatically switch to a smaller font for things like uh, a matrix editing. Uh, so yeah. that would definitely have been a, a doable thing I, I would think so the 43S RAM layout, this looks relatively <coughs> familiar to me. You'll, you'll see that all these pages say draft on it because it's a, it's, it's a draft document. But um, this is very similar to the, to the 34S with the four or eight level stack labeled X, Y, Z, T, and A through D. Um, and last X and also uh, registers I, J, and K. Um, general purpose registers R00 through 99 and then dot triple zero which corresponds to 112 and all the way up to 0.887, which is up to our register 999. And then the in-between piece are the, 
the stack in the last X. Uh, program steps from zero to 9,999 or however many will, uh, could be held in memory. What are registers <coughs> I, J, and K? Uh, um, I should know this off the top of my head. Uh, can you list them as general good. purpose and they can be addressed by letter? I think they're uh, correct. The matrix, matrix, matrix. matrix. They are, they're, you store arguments in there for functions that need them. Okay. As I recall. It says on the but L is last X. It's not a last X register, it's just memory 108. Say that again? L is? L is last X. Yes, yes, yes. Right. It's just Absolutely. memory 108. And flags, uh, some of which have definite definitions, especially carrying overflow for the 16C mode, um, various other, other stuff. Uh, I wanted to talk about a little bit about his concept for data, uh, data objects and display. Um, you'll see on the next slide there's a lot of different uh, data types, but he, he shows that if you're displaying various kind of numbers, the display will be very explicit. Um, if you enter a number without a decimal point, you get essentially an integer and it's followed by a little i. Um, Here's a hex number, it's got a little 16, a fraction. Uh, real numbers with, with decimals. Uh, complex, showing real and imaginary part. Uh, polar coordinates with angles. Um, time, uh, or rather uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds, and, and fractions of a second. Hours, minutes, and seconds, seconds and fractions of a second. And, and, uh, and date mode. So that theoretically, you look at a number in, in the X registering to know what kind of value it is. Um, here are the different types that he proposed. Um, again, uh, an infinite precision integer. Uh, and he, here is the proposed size uh, size in bits, 64 bits or more. A, a, uh, a rational number, this is kind of an interesting concept to me. It would be a, a number which is basically a ratio of an, a numerator over denominator. So it just stores the numerator and the denominator. Uh, in memory as it is. Uh, real numbers, complex, <coughs> angles, time, date, uh, alpha strings, and it, it's interesting, instead of having an alpha register, he's having any, any register be able to store alpha strings and, and memory will just occupy that space. So you could say, you put in a 30 character string and you say store you know, a name or store a number and it will just, it will just put it in. And it'll, it'll just shove everything around to occupy that space. Um, matrix or vector, a real or complex, uh, an integer number of finite precision, uh, a double precision real, and a, 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 um, there's also a, a type called mode where you could store the mode of the whole machine uh, in memory, and labels uh, based on. Uh, number of characters in, the, in each label. Um, he goes into all kinds of detail, uh, just so you can see it, on how you would either um, add or subtract numbers of the two different types and what type the result would be, or whether you multiply <coughs> together numbers of the two different types and what type of result you would get. So for instance, an angle times, uh, times a real number would give you an angle would be a, a type 5. So 5 times 12 is a 5. But you can you can read this at your leisure. Uh, full stack undo like the 31S has. So uh, if you if you make an error you can get back the, the, the stack the way it was before you uh, attempt before you attempted the operation. Uh, another thing he uh, describes in great detail is this thing called the catalog. The catalog seems to show you everything everything in the machine. Um, the, when you pop, when you turn the catalog on, you get a top level menu, which are all keys that take you to submenus. Functions, programs, digits, characters, variables, and menus. And then for each of those, he describes you know, what happens when you press those. So user programs will be listed by name. Uh, If you want to go into just the functions of the machine, you can step through those. Uh, User-defined variables, other, other, other types of objects, and he's got this humongous table listing everything and, and how you can get from one to the other. 
Uh, also, he's got a, a memory and flag browser that takes advantage of the full full size of the LCD. And he had examples here with uh, here's the status of the global flags from zero to 111 um, with setter setter clear, uh, various status of the machine, uh, status of the local flags, how many local registers are allocated, and you know, so you can get most of this at a glance. Then he's got a then he's got a register browser, so he's got registers, you know, X, Y, Z, T, and whatnot, and what values are in there, and you can see it's showing you, in this example, uh, various different data types and, and you know what they look like. Uh, also, numeric registers uh, similarly, and you can browse through this thing with the arrows and and whatnot, jump all around. Uh, I threw this in here more as an exercise when you're reading this on you know on your own, but. Uh, is he's got an extensive description of vector and matrix handling. Um, you can you can key in a vector, um, and and then there's an editor where you can you can use the arrow keys to step from uh, value to value and enter the data in, and you get it you get an editing menu and um, allows you to go to elements in a matrix and change them and, and do various things. Um, He had an example here. This was an example where he entered a matrix and um, was doing doing math on that matrix. When the matrix bumps up from the uh, from the x level to the y or higher, you just get an indication that there's a ma an m by n matrix on the stack um, and. Uh, Multiplication of two matrices will show you the result, uh, and the, the display will attempt to show you as much of the matrix as it possibly can by first reducing the number of uh, significant figures displayed, and if that's not enough, you'll see an ellipsis on the rows and another one on the columns. Um, so, uh, you know, this is an example of a, of, a, of a six by five matrix, and here's how it's shown on the stack with. You know, the the upper left-hand corner displayed, and the others just indicated that there's more. Uh, also, um, likewise, matrices and vectors can can include complex numbers, and the math can be operated on them, them uh, similarly. Um, this is just sort of a collection of, of pieces of a chapter called Advanced Problem Solving, and he just goes through, and, and I, I didn't show it all here, uh, programmable sums and products, He's got an equation library with an, 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 you know, you can create your own equations to store them in, a, in, in the library. Uh, an interactive solver, which will pop up your variables and allow you to solve for the thing. I did not see a multiple equation solver in there, uh, but also a numeric integration uh, capability. Uh, and you can, you can basically put in a formula and put in the limits in it, and it goes ahead and does the solution. And finally, uh, programming mode. Um, he's got it showing up to six program steps. Uh, and uh, navigation keys up and down. There is a program menu, uh, which, which has got 18 functions on it right there, like label and end and, and whatnot. Um, Uh, last but not least, the largest portion of this manual is what he calls the index of items. And I think there's essentially the, a similar kind of thing in the 34S manual. It's a, it's a couple hundred pages of, of basically every function and, and item in the, in the machine and, and how they work. He uses the word item instead of object? Well, it's different kind of things. And, and I guess he was just trying to pick pick a word that was more generic because this is functions and operators and, and right. just, just everything possible. Mm -hmm. So he describes them. Um, he indicates for each one with a number in here, uh, whether it's a function with no effect on the stack, whether it's a function that, uh, that uh, takes one object, takes two objects, three uh, functions that push an object onto the stack or push two objects onto the stack. Um, he's got everything color coded like in the 34S manual, so you can more easily find it on the keyboard or in a menu. Uh, and describes them. He's got lots of cross references back and forth. This is very early in that uh, in that thing. It just goes on for 100 pages or maybe 200 pages.
Uh, finally, um, his anticipated prototype hardware specs, I, I believe, were based on Eric's data. I guess Eric is going to enlighten us a, a little bit later on today. Uh, but the thing that was, it, was in, of interest to me were the dimensions, um, well, the LCD 400 by 240 and the, and the overall dimensions in um, length, width, and depth. And I thought it would be interesting to compare these to the 50G and the Prime because uh, when we talk about the 50G and the Prime to Walter, he always say, well, those are battleships. <laughs> yeah. They're sure. way too large. So I thought, well, I wonder how close this is to the battleship. So, uh, you know, based on this data, the, the 43S and the Prime are the exact same thickness, but it is uh, <coughs> narrower and it's also shorter in length, and, and certainly smaller in all three dimensions from the 50G. So, maybe it's a mini battleship destroyer. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 Rich and I on the, on the prototype hardware, and I'm not going to take up too much of your talk here, but the prototype yeah. hardware was our specific. Um, intent that it be narrow enough that it still be marginally possible to operate with one hand, which the 50G uh, we do not believe is. Right. And that's a combination of width and thickness. Yeah, I was going to say thickness right. contributes as much yeah. to that as width, like mm -hmm. you know, we'll reach around. And hand size. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Maybe more well, so than anything. Yeah. It's only 2.6 uh, inches wider and 0.5 so, inches. So here is sort of an abridged version of the, of the overall manual contents. And the, uh, the index of items starts in 171 and goes to 255. I guess it's like 80 pages at this point. Uh, but, but he's just got lots and lots of things in here. Uh, he talks about uh, menus, catalogs, browsers. Uh, this is a section I didn't even go into, um, the customizability of the machine. The anticipation was that not only would you have a user mode which would allow you to redefine the entire keyboard plus the F and G shifted planes, but also be able to create your own personal custom menus. Uh, so you, know, you could redefine the, the entire thing and save those definitions away in memory and recall them at, at will. Um, so uh, there are unwritten chapters yet about various things. He did have a good list of memory of messages and error codes, uh, character sets. There's lots of character sets in this thing. Um, he also has some really nice tables, which you, I, I didn't show here because I thought it was too much for this presentation, but he compares uh, 42S functions to the 43S as well as 16C to the 43S and 43S and 34S side by side, which is, which is interesting stuff. Uh, he intended doing a chapter on uh, flashing the, the firmware and troubleshooting uh, and, and, and working it from a computer and those are as yet uh, not, in, not in there but he's got sections identified. He does have a nice description of uh, various advanced mathematical functions and very early release notes. Uh, so I just wanted to give you an idea of what, what's been going on in his head and he's obviously put tons and tons of thought into this and and I guess he's thinking that if, if there are eager people who are willing to spend the time and you know invest the time to work with him that maybe this thing could become a reality sometime in the future so last but not least um, you know, from from Voyager up to this guy we we, we will definitely want our 43s <laughs> That's huge. Uh, yeah, really? <laughs> I, I hate to think about carrying around a 350 page manual. How about some, putting something available that you can put on your phone? You're talking about the documentation. Put the documentation on the phone that you can read. I, I'd like to see the whole phone. application on the phone as well. Yeah, but what I'm saying is. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I, he, I agree with you. He's actually um, come a long way with that. He's gone to personalized PDF, so you can buy a PDF as long as you don't share it. It's got your name on it and stuff like that, right. so you can do that. You know, yeah. With the 34 I'm talking about, sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's all I had. Uh, hopefully this thing will become a reality. I hope we're, you know, we're at that point again. Not quite where we were in 2010 with the 34S because they had already had the well into a PC emulator, but uh, one thing you're showing on that display there, um, you're showing um, <coughs> what looks like uh, five levels of stack plus two. Um, well, that's a program, or, or, or six six lines of program code plus Correct. a status line. Yes. Um, 
and to cram eight lines of stacks is that that's going to be too small. Still too small. So yeah. you have to reduce the number of menu levels displayed that's true. and then yeah. increase it. Absolutely. Jake, can the, the stuff that that is in the presentation that's going to get handed out, can that be discussed publicly on the Absolutely. forum? Absolutely. On the Absolutely. forum? Yeah. Okay. He had just asked me to not give out the whole stuff. The, the whole PDF. Yeah. But I sh he's got a copy of my presentation, so by all means, give this, give this out to everybody. This represents about 40 pages of that manual cut down in various yeah. ways. This will really be an RPM machine, not an RPM it's machine. It's an RPM machine, yes. It's absolutely a 42S yeah. extension. Uh, strictly a yeah, monochrome, it's a monochrome display. Right, in fact, at one point in the description, he says you purposely do not implement any graphing capabilities. It's not a grapher, at least in his mind, it was not intended to be a grapher, just a RPM program. Because there's another project running on, actually, it's called OpenRPM. That's, that's running to be, uh, you're going to be flash at 50 with OpenRPM and then it's rewriting everything. Yep. You know, rethinking everything. This is different. It's yeah. more like a 50 or... Uh, right. Uh, right. This is really an RPM machine. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. The ultimate RPM machine. <laughs> yeah. We, and then some. Would think so. Yeah, we think so. So who's going to do the hardware? Well, maybe, maybe we'll hear a little bit later. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. That's all. Thank you.